Motor Week is made possible by Rock Auto, Tire Rack, and Die Hard. This is the Beretta GTZ. If you've had your eye on a Beretta, you're probably wondering how this one fits into the alphabet soup of models. Well, let's start at the beginning. The base Beretta Coupe is still around. Next up the list comes the GT. Then comes this new for 90 GTZ. The Beretta GTU, the one that used to wear the spoiler, is gone. And with the Beretta GTZ, Chevrolet has come to the end of the GT alphabet. Does that mean this is the Beretta to end all Berettas? Let's find out. Like the GTU that preceded it, the GTZ has received a few exterior add-ons to set it apart from its more sedate base and GT model siblings. Up front, a solid panel replaces the standard grille, and a deep chin spoiler with integral fog lights hugs the ground. Rocker panel extensions, a new rear valence, and a deck lid hugging rear spoiler complete the package. Under the body is a high performance suspension package that is carried along on a set of 16 inch body colored aluminum wheels that are exclusive to the GTZ. It's all driven by GM's 2.3 liter high output quad four engine. The GTZ is the only Beretta model that gets the quad four HO and its potent 180 horsepower output. It's mated to the Muncie Getrag five speed manual transmission. The shifter is accurate but has that familiar clunky feel that doesn't encourage fast blast through the gears. Despite that, we still recorded a rapid 0 to 60 time of 7.5 seconds and a quarter mile of 15.9 seconds at 89 miles per hour. There's plenty of front drive torque steer as the potent quad 4 pulls the GTZ down the track. The engine has tons of low end power and despite its persistent buzz, pulls harder as it reaches higher revs. A different clutch is called for, however. Our test car's clutch had an annoying late release and tended to snap on and off rather than easing smoothly into the power band. And smooth is hardly the word that describes the GTZ's ride. It's fairly harsh on rough roads, like a Corvette, thanks to the stiff Level 4 suspension package. But it does get a healthy 27 miles per gallon from an EPA estimated mileage of 22 City 31 Highway. The stiff suspension may not do much to tame the ride, but it gives the GTZ amazingly good cornering ability. The steering is quick and responsive, and front plow is very light. A careful foot is required on the gas, however. Too much and the punchy engine can overpower the relatively narrow tires, causing them to break loose when exiting a corner. But if driven precisely, as all high-performance cars should be, the GTZ slips through even high-speed maneuvers without a hitch. Braking is handled by the usual Beretta combination of front disc and rear drums. They bring the car down from 60 and a good average distance of 126 feet. Stops are straight and stable, but fade was evident after only a few hard runs. Lockup is also common thanks to the mushy pedal, which makes it hard to control your braking pressure. Inside the GTZ is standard Beretta with a few extra touches like a leather wrapped steering wheel and new manually adjusted sport seats with a four-way tilt feature and hand pump lumbar support. Fabric quality is very good, and while some of our staff had a hard time finding a comfortable driving position, those that did found the seats to be well padded and supportive. The Beretta's clean, comprehensive gauge cluster with its large tachometer is also part of the GTZ package. Our test car also came equipped with the GTZ Option Group 2, which includes a full set of power accessories. Heat and ventilation controls are stock Beretta, simple, well-marked rotary dials. The same praise goes for the optional AM-FM cassette stereo. It's a fine-sounding unit, too, but like the vent controls, it's set too low on the dash to be easily used while driving. Rear seat room is more generous than in many coupes. You can actually carry adults back there, though long-legged folks will feel a bit cramped. A split-folding rear seat is standard equipment. But we continue to have problems with the trunk's small opening and fairly high liftover, which detract from its excellent cargo space. The Ford Probe GT also suffers from the problem of high trunk liftover. 
Its Mazda turbo four-cylinder gives up 35 horsepower to the GTZ's Quad 4, but it's still quicker to 60 miles per hour. It costs more than the GTZ, but handles better and offers optional anti-lock brakes. The Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX also costs more, but its price includes a very effective all-wheel drive system that gives it superior handling. It's also quicker thanks to a turbocharged engine that makes 15 more horsepower than the Quad 4. The Eclipse has a smaller trunk than the GTZ, but a much more efficient dash. The Beretta GTZ comes out on top with its low price, powerful free revving engine, and precise handling. It also offers good gas mileage and a very roomy and versatile interior for a two-door coupe. But it also has a less than perfect shifter and clutch, as well as a harsh ride if you live where rough pavement is the rule, like we do. In our safety check, the Beretta GTZ passes with rear shoulder belts, but lacks driver or passenger airbags and anti-lock brakes. Adding all that might have meant production changes that would drive the price of the GTZ up to the level of its competition. So no, the GTZ is not the ultimate Beretta, but it is a good compromise between a daily commuter and a serious sports car. And for the price, it's a compromise that should keep quite a few drivers very happy.